How's it going Chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I somehow managed to talk my way into Iron Root Republic and we're going to get a little tour of their two stills, which are kind of monsters for craft distillers, and they're absolutely beautiful. Welcome to Stiller everyone, I'm Jesse and this is the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation. I'm here with Iron Root Republic and we're going to get a little behind the scenes look at your two setups which are pretty cool and they kind they're kind of different definitely definitely different definitely different i got something right <laughs> So the first thing I wanted to show you guys was the boiler because this is different than pretty much any still a home distiller is going to run, right? Right. So this is going to be our 50 horsepower, 2 million BTU boiler. So it's made by Mira. Uh, so grunty as shit. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so and the whole purpose of this is just to create and generate steam for us so that we can run our stills out there. Uh, we heat everything with steam as opposed to direct fire. Mm -hmm. um, there are advantages to both. Uh, one of the things we like about steam is it's going to give us a nice even cook on our, our mash tank. Okay, right. Um, but the are other reason... On or off grain? We're on grain. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> Carry on, sir. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so the, the other reason we really like the steam is because one of the stills out there produces vodka. In the United oh, okay. States, vodka comes off the still at 190 proof. Mm -hmm. So we always say that's definitely flammable, if not explosive. So we try and keep any live fire out of the, out of the, the production area uh, because enough. of that production. Yeah. So it's just a an extra safety step, and it also means that you can greatly reduce scorching or it, do, it does help reduce scorching, yeah. yeah. So um, between that and the, we call it an agitator, it's like a big boat prop that's in the mm -hmm, mash tank mixing mm -hmm. around. Um, so between those two, we don't have any problems burning corn out there. Right. So. And stills this size, ele like electric elements is just a... Yeah, it, I, I don't know if electric element would even pull it off, no matter how long we had. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so your two options are really direct fire or a big Steam. boiler. Yeah. And and even once you go to a certain size still, even direct fire gets to be a challenge sometimes. So right. Okay. If you're going to be on grain. All right. So let's take a step out that way. We'll see where it goes into the still. We can do that? Yeah, we can do that. Awesome. All right. So right here is where the steam comes in from the boiler and goes into the back of the still. And this particular still has got an internal coil. And so this is going to go into a big copper coil. It's going to go around the entire inside of the, st of the pot. Okay, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. So what you're saying is the steam never actually comes in contact? Not in this process. So right. there are uh, distilleries that do direct injection of steam. Mm -hmm. um, we are all um, not directly injected, so it's going to be adjacent through the piping. So it's essentially a, a big heat exchanger. You got it. The, the opposite of what homebrew beer guys use as an immersion chiller. Exactly. It'll look about the same when you look in the, in the pot too. Just big. Big. Okay, so this was made for us by Vendome Copper and Brass out of Kentucky. They make a lot of the big guy stills. Normally they okay. don't make ones that look like this though. Oh really? This yeah. was new for them, was it? Yeah, yeah well, they loved it. They, they sent one of their top coppersmiths out here because they get to pick their, their uh, jobs according to kind of how long they've been with the company. Oh, So this was kind of different dips? and cool. Yeah. Oh, dips. really? Yeah, so, but uh, it's, a, it's about 1,200 gallons. Pretty good size. Freedom units don't compute. <laughs> I'll, I'll look that up later. These guys uh, are, help kind of custom design this one for us. Okay, well. And so we got to design angles, diameters, heights, whatever we wanted to. Was there anything particular you were looking for that was you know, uniquely different to what they do? What, where was it different? Uh, one of the things that's very different is they're gonna be the legs on this guy. Oh, okay. And so they, um, they typically don't put fancy legs on them. They normally put kind of little posts on them. And mm -hmm. so I'd seen one still where they put legs on it and I begged them to do it for us, and that they did. So it looks more like an animal now than it does. Uh, right. Like so something, something on stilts. Yeah. So it's to look cool. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. That's cool. So um, what you guys can't see right now is that these stills are literally sitting in the middle of your serving area. Mm -hmm. Like everything's on display. Uh, so if you do get a chance to come and visit, the whiskey is excellent, and it's pretty to look at as well, guys. <laughs> So inside this bad boy, uh, we tried to grab a little shot for you. It's pretty dark, but you should be able to see. Do you want to explain what's going on 
inside the still. So inside we've got the copper coil uh -huh. that goes around the inside. So we, we took a look at the back side of this guy and saw yeah. where the, the coil comes in. So it coils around him until it gets all the way down to the bottom and then it exits out the very bottom. Okay. Um, and at the very bottom it will actually turn back into what we call condensate, which is just a hot water at that point, and that'll go back to the boiler and we'll reuse that and then oh, send so it back as steam again. So it's a closed system. system. Yep. Oh, okay, cool. And you've also got an agitator? We do have an agitator in there, and so that's because we do on-grain fermentation. We also distill on-grain for the first distillation. Oh, okay. So Cool. Uh, let's back up a little bit so we can actually see some more, and then sure. we can talk about that. All right, so now that you can kind of see the whole, whole picture here, so this is going to look like something you more typically see in Scotland. Um, and obviously above the, the, the pot there, you call it the boiler, right? So yeah. above the pot, we uh, go out to, we call it an onion, a boil bulb. Uh, there's a couple other names for it, but uh, um, so ours expands out there. Uh, now that one is actually larger than we originally intended it to be, uh, because in order to fit this still in this building, uh, we had to shrink it down a little bit. So in order to increase copper uh, surface area, we went ahead and made that, that bulb a little bit bigger. So in terms of the, the product that is actually going to come out of the still, what, what effect does that have, the, the shape of the onion? Increasing the, the, the copper uh, surface area, mm -hmm. it, it's going to, well, for one, you want to make sure you remove all the sulfur out. So you got to make sure you have enough copper contact, but uh, the amount of copper contact we have uh, with the vapor is going to affect the flavor that you're going to have. Uh, a lot of that hap actually happens in the condenser, but we still want to make sure we have enough copper contact to, to get those uh, initial kind of sulfur components out before it even gets there. Right. So it's literally contact with the, with the spirit, mostly in vapor form mm -hmm. at that point in time uh, with the copper. But is it adding any extra sort of pass passive reflux or is that? Oh, definitely. Yeah. So yeah? it's definitely going to add to the reflux on it. So anytime you add surface area, there's uh, more, more of a surface for that, that vapor to hit and then condense and then go back down to the pot. So. Right, cool. Uh, and then going up from the, the pot, uh, so going up from the onion, mm -hmm. you've got quite a steep angle on your line arm. That's do you, you yeah. want to tell us why you, why you chose that? So, well, the way we des designed that was basically we drank a bunch of scotch and then intently looked at pictures of the stills that that scotch was oh, made Oh, sneaky. And eventually <laughs> we figured out we liked the style. Um, okay. Um, and it actually fits with making bourbon. So uh, with the downward angle, pretty much anything that makes it to the line arm is going to go into the condenser. Yeah. Um, so your point of no return is right there. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and the condenser itself is, let me jump over this side so you can see, this one here. Do you want to tell us what's going on in there? So we call that one a tube and shell condenser. Mm -hmm. um, and basically there's a series of tubes that are running through it and we'll just run the cooling water on the outside. Um, and so... So we run the cooling water through through the uh, through the condenser. That hot vapor comes in and just kind of condenses all on the sides of that. So it's awesome. So for us, uh, home distillers will often call it a, a shotgun or a Gatling gun condenser. Uh, I'm assuming coolant in the bottom, out coolant the top. In the, yep, perfect. Um, so these guys are also recirculating the the coolant. It's a closed loop mm -hmm. back to a chiller. Are you using glycol or what? So we the... use water through the condenser. So. Oh, sorry. I mean, what's uh, what's chilling the water when it gets it, back? It, so we have a, a it's a split system. So we have the inside unit. We have an outdoor unit. So it's air cooled. Uh, so it okay. gets air cooled uh, with some refrigerant out there. But uh, when it comes back in, the only thing that goes and actually touches the equipment is water, chilled water. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. So the spirit flows down out of the condenser into your spirit safe here. Do you call it a spirit safe? We call it a spirit safe, but ours is a little less safe. Not safe. We don't, <laughs> we don't have to lock it. <laughs> okay. That's just so greedy customers don't. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Before it gets to this point though, mm -hmm. you were telling me something interesting about controlling the temperature of your coolant. Right, so we control the, the temperature of the water that's going into the condenser. Okay. And the reason being is, um, so if you have it really cold, you're, you're going to get your vapor to condense at the very top of the condenser. Right, so okay. Condensers are made out of copper, so if you actually run it a little bit warmer, it's not going to actually condense until it gets to the bottom. So you have more time in contact with copper when it's in a vaporous form. 
Oh, okay. So more salt is taken out. So if you if you have it set real cool, you're going to get a meatier spirit, a little more sulfury mm, up at the top. Okay. So if you have it set hot, it's going to make it all the way down to the bottom. It's going to strip more of that out, and so you're going to get a, probably more of a grassier type lighter spirit. That is super interesting. Yeah. Uh, what temperature are you aiming for the product to actually come out at? So what we like ours to come out 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, is that about the temperature that the hydrometer is calibrated to? Yeah, it okay. is the exact one. Okay, 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 cool. <laughs> so we like it there. Um, actually, on our on our first run, on our stripping run, uh, we will either set it higher or lower, kind of depending on what we want to run. All right, so this thing is a monster, but you've also got another still. Correct. Uh, sort of directly opposite, which begs the question, how do you decide which still to use? What do you, what do you put through each still? So the big pot still, mm -hmm. he's going to go for most of our bourbon, whiskeys, um, when I do rum, I'm going to run, run, run rum through there. Oh, so okay. Brandies, we like to do that. So uh, things oh. that are kind of more traditionally double distilled right. go through there. You want to keep a lot of flavor. Yeah. So uh, a lot of the stuff we will actually run through that guy. And then if it needs to be more refined, then we'll send it to the other one. Oh, so you use it to strip everything for as sure. well. Yep. He's the workhorse. Okay. So if you're running vodka, for example, mm -hmm. you'll put it through this big still. A, because a whole lot of copper, and B, because it's big. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, which means that we can probably go over here and have a look at this other still, which is cool, guys, but uh, before we do, cheers, man. What are we drinking? Uh, this is our hubris. It's a corn whiskey. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> They're too modest. <laughs> Basically, I want a little extra time to drink this before we move on. Uh, do you have a name for the still? We do. You so do? We call him Jim Bowie. So this, this may be lost on, on some of your viewers. So uh, in Texas history, when we were fighting our war for independence from Mexico, mm -hmm. one of the big battles was fought at the Alamo. So, and the story mm. in Texas is all the Texans died at the Alamo. Oh. Uh, one, of them, one of the leaders was named Jim Bowie. Okay. So he was from Kentucky and he died in Texas. So we're hoping that's the fate of that particular still. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a little morbid. It's morbid, but kind of optimistically morbid? Yeah, I guess. That, that's the best description of Iron Root <laughs> I can think of. <laughs> so over on this side, we have Ruby, which no one can work out why she's called I a, Ruby. I had a grandmother named Ruby, but I think she just looked like a Ruby when she came in. You just had that feeling? Yeah, yeah. you're like, uh, Ruby. So. I like it. We can roll with that. <laughs> <laughs> I figure this is probably what you guys are going to be quite interested in because it, this is way out of what most home distillers will ever see. True. Yeah. So do you want to give us a really quick rundown on each part of the step? Mm -hmm. uh, you've essentially got one, two, three, four bits by the look of it. Four bits. I yep. like it. I, yeah. It's a dollar. Simple. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <We can't>, yeah. <laughs> so th this is technically a pot still. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you see it referred to as a hybrid pot. Um, in the United States uh, specifically, but essentially what it is is you start out with pot and then there's two columns adjacent to that which are, the way it's it's piped you could actually set those right on top of it and it would be the exact same thing. Right. Um, and then it has the uh, on the stainless steel back there it's got the condenser uh, which is going to run just like the condenser we just looked at um, on the big still. If you had the height you could essentially stack the pot the two columns on top of each other and then have the condenser coming off the side. You could, but what's uh, nice about having them off to the side is this still kind of is like a Swiss Army knife of stills. Because <clears throat> the way it's set up on this, I can actually shut off both or one column at a time. Right. So you can use one column or the other column. Or, or no both. columns. Or no column. You can just run it as a pot yep, still as well. Yeah, run it as a pot. Awesome. I'm hoping you guys can see the pot or the boiler as we often call it um, pretty well from here. What's the deal with this is kind of a different shape? Slightly different shape. Um, part of that on the bottom of it, it's got the steam jacket on the outside as opposed to um, steam coal on the inside. It still okay. has an agitator on the inside. Okay. Um, so we can still mix it up if we need to. Um, yeah, you are going to pull a little bit different flavor with the shape of this versus kind of our more traditional Scottish style pot still. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously you've got a little less copper involved, um, at least on the, on the boiler side. All right. So the, the still we looked at before is kind of for the most part, pretty traditional, I'm guessing for Isla whiskey almost. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah? yeah. Whereas this, this is not Scottish no. apparatus. This is German. German. The finest in German technology. Ah, excellent. You can run this thing as a pot stool, but you, you generally 
decide not to? Generally, we don't. Um, it produces a pretty different uh, whiskey by comparison to our other other pots. Right, style. right. Um, so we have used it as a as a uh, just a pot in the past, mm -hmm. um, but it has so many right angles coming off the line arm, um, so it, it makes four yeah. ninety degree turns before it actually makes it to the condenser, um, which does have an effect. It, it does change the the, the 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 vapor going through there and the the reflux that's happening in each one of those turns. So. Right, so it's a whole lot of surface area. It's slowing the velocity of the vapor down. And I've got to imagine it's kind of creating little pools of... And they're 90 degree turns. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I get it. Mm -hmm. So you can use it as a pot, but you don't generally. What you're generally going to do is run the vapor through one or both of the columns. Right. I think most home distillers are at least familiar with what a plate looks like. But do you want to kind of give us a rundown on, on how it actually sure. works? Yeah, so it's essentially there's going to be a plate in between each one of those sets of windows. So we call it a bubble plate, mm -hmm. uh, it has a bubble cap on it. Essentially it's a uh, tube that comes up and a cap that sits over the top. Now the reason we do this is, is as the vapor goes through there, it's going to go all the way to the top of this column, and at the top into a copper section that there's no windows that to see into. It's basically what we call a deflagmator. Yep. yep. Um, it's like a mini condenser, right? Yeah, so, a little one of those. That's right. <laughs> and so it does, it, it causes everything to condense underneath there. And then what happens is when that liquid drains back down through this, this column, it's going to fill one of each of those plates up with a layer of liquid. Okay. And we actually have controls on the back of that where we can adjust how deep that layer of liquid is. Are you controlling that uh, by essentially having a, a dump tube? Yeah. Uh, there, you, there's you an overflow. The yeah. And so you can adjust where that dumps out at. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So essentially what you're doing is, is, is the cap over the top is stopping the liquid on the plate falling back down to the plate below it. You got it. And it's forcing the vapor to come up around and then percolate, I guess this would be the word yeah. for it, yeah, so. through the, the liquid mm -hmm. uh, and forcing interaction between the, the reflux liquid coming down and the, the vapor going up. Right. So. We call it enriching the spirit. As Ooh, it goes I like that. I'm going to use that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's becoming enriched on each each of the plates or in between. So, um, so it's roughly, they say it drives up the spirit about 10 proof each plate. Okay. Um, I've never actually gone through there and tested each one, so <laughs> it could be magic. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, with this setup, are you able to to pull spirit from separate plates? We are not. Okay. So, so you go all the way through to the end. So if, if we want to pull off spirit at a lower proof, something mm -hmm. like that, we can bypass, say, the second column. Or we can adjust the fill levels on the plates. Right. Um, so you, essentially, you can effectively choose how many plates you want to engage. Um, as opposed to, say, a continuous column still, where they can actually pull off different, different proofs, different uh, chemicals at different points. Um, this one is still a batch style, so it all has to come out the condenser before we can get it. Right. So with a setup like this, you're making cuts with time, time sort of your, your vector, I guess, right. beginning, middle, end, so, uh, as opposed to pulling from individual plates. You got it, we still have to make cuts on, on, the, on the back side of the condenser. I got something right again. Yes. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to talk about is uh, this girl's kind of smart in the way that it deals with water. Correct. So I like to refer to her as a camel, which I know, okay. I know she'd appreciate that. <laughs> uh, but what she does is she, she uses her, her water um, from the deflagmators and from the condenser and then stores it in the stainless steel tanks down here. Okay. And so those are not actually part of the column for the distillation side of it. They actually will store the hot water there until after we're done distilling. And then there's a pump on the back that will actually pump that into the cleaning system. And so we're oh. cleaning with hot water at the end. So you don't need to heat the water to, to clean right. it. Right. Um, what happens if you collect too much hot water? Uh, it'll overflow, it'll go to drain. Oh, so, okay, cool. Yeah. Do, you, do you get to that level often? Oh, we do. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. this is the gin which is really cool oh, honestly guys I feel bad about this but I had no idea you make gin here we fly under the radar yeah right 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 I also hang out with whiskey, whiskey nuts so that's what I hear about uh, is there anything else that you make on the still so we make the vodka the base for the gin and then we actually distill the botanicals off separately oh okay that so, makes a whole lot of sense and we actually make something that's uh, 
we call it a light whiskey in the United States. Okay. So it's much higher proof uh, distilled spirit, and so, but it still goes into a barrel like a whiskey. So, so more like a Irish continuous still style to that, yeah. thing, but with American ingredients. Yeah. That's cool. All right, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I've been talking to these guys about these stills a lot more than what we could fit on camera. So if you have any other questions about this, I will attempt to answer them for you down in the comments. All right, guys, just before we go, I need to just step this way a little bit. Keep, 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 keep. I need to say a huge thank you to the patrons over here. Like, they might be hiding you, I'm not sure, dude. But the only reason I'm able to get here, <laughs> yeah, okay. we're getting real close over here. Are you guys in Texas are friendly. <laughs> The only reason I'm here is because of you guys, so I need to say a huge, huge thank you. Anyway, I've had an absolute blast here, guys. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it as well. If you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you really like it, hit the subscribe button down below. I'll catch you next time, team. Keep on chasing the craft. See ya.